of my question, first questions. Uh, you were saying that uh, food should be taken uh, separately from vegetables because they are easily digested. What do you think about green smoothies? Because green smoothies uh, they're usually no, they no problem. Right? They're already digested. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. And my second question is about my carpal tunnel. Can you help me? Uh, yes. Uh, you can apply uh, clay. We have some clay. I think. <laughs> I don't know, where did you get the clay? <laughs> okay, so you can apply it. You can probably move your dinner before 6 p.m. There are anti-inflammatory, because huh? it's a repetitive movement, right? So you just have to get the, the swelling down. So you can take anti-inflammatory like curcumin, that's yellow ginger, or you can uh, create your own concoction because omega oil can also lower inflammation. You take B-complex, if you really want to get the swelling down, you can go on a fruit diet for a few days, so the swelling may go down. Yes, sir. Does KN help in the inflammation too? Yes, it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. It has capsaicin, which is anti-inflammatory. And it's a vasodilator, so it opens up circulation. It helps with digestion. It helps boost the immune system. Uh, Cain has so many good things in it that uh, the entire books have been written about it. Cain is seeding the oil. I used to make uh, uh, massage, slimming massage with body wrap, mm -hmm. but uh, instead of clay, I used a charcoal. No, uh, this. A base cream, and then I, I mix with the uh, cayenne powder, mm -hmm. and then I massage with that and wrap it with plastic. Yes. Is that okay? That's okay. Yeah, it's working, right? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> it's okay. so it would be good for pain. It will help lower cholesterol. It can even thin out this, you know, tighten up uh, problems like this. Uh, for those with uh, uh, weight problems. Weight problems. Mentioned about the eggplant, which is good for a fat. Yes. Is that raw or yes, raw. It's raw. So you take the eggplant, uh, you know, hammer it to until it's a paste-like consistency. Apply it on the swollen or painful areas, and put put a plastic wrap band so that it 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 stays there can overnight. We, can we add psyllium husk to that? You probably could, but the the eggplant already has a sticky consistency, so. Better have it directly applied. Is that good for arthritis? And how about rheumatism? It, would, it can help also. And Dr. Yesterday you mentioned uh, onion, garlic, and lemon combined. Yes, it can, it can help. And help you uh, heal your asthma. Yes. Uh, what can be the bright portion of this tree? Ah, uh, it, it's according to this. I won't say heal. I will say uh, prevent the asthma attack or it also open up the... Because asthma is an allergic response. Mm -hmm. So if you eat something that you're not supposed to eat, you have that reaction. But if you take the... The onion is a bronchodilator like ventolin. Mm -hmm. And it's a mucolytic as well. You know, mm -hmm. with the salt lamp. And, uh, you know, in, in the staples. Now the garlic would be your natural antibiotic. The ginger also helps with the lungs. And when we mix it together with honey, it, it tastes good. So you take a tablespoon three times a day, that helps. But if you really want uh, longer, longer protection, then uh, watch your diet closely. Any type of allergy, we call it, we do a hypoallergenic diet. And basically, it's that type of cleansing diet that uh, we advise. So in that case, this is just in case you have an attack? Well, well I take it to prevent an attack. Okay. I think. Doc, uh, can you tell us about uh, problems with psoriasis and... With what? Psoriasis. Ah, psoriasis. Uh, psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. So your immune system is attacking the skin. Now again, when you say, when you talk to the derma, they say unknown. So how can you cure something unknown? Right? Now in autoimmune medicine, we always think toxins. So maybe his diet is 
they have linked it with auto immune disease have also been linked for non advocates to actually uh, pork intake. Pork has uh, quite a lot of parasites that, the, that cannot be killed by fire. And in research done in Germany, they found out that the DNA of, of pork is almost looks almost the same as the human DNA. So when we put when the person is very fond of eating pork, he develops autoimmune reaction against the, the, the DNA in the pork, which in turn has have an effect on him, on the uh, patient. So they have linked it to that. Uh, autoimmune disease can also be caused by uh, heavy metal exposure, chemicals, pesticides. And what we try to do is, first we give something to depress the inflammation. Okay? So whenever you have skin problems, it takes so long to treat. So they, they, they give steroids to apply or they take steroids internally. But it only works temporarily. If they take it for a long time, then you have all the side effects of steroids. Uh, it depresses the immune system so much that you are fair game to any bacteria, especially tuberculosis and uh, skin, uh, disease, uh, skin uh, infection. So what we try to do is, again, as I said, we modulate the immune system. Uh, for non-severe psoriasis, we just give the diet, we give them herbs, and they, they improve. Fever therapy would be for the really severe uh, psoriatic case. So fever therapy is the, we, we put them in, a, in the top. It's not something that uh, anybody can do because we have to watch the heart rate. If the heart rate goes past 140, then they can have a heat stroke. So it, this is something that uh, our nurses are trained to, to watch over. We had a therapist once who's in very good shape, health, and she wanted to lose weight. She, was, she did a fever therapy on her own. She told her, her staff, please watch over me from time to look at, look at me uh, from time to time. The staff forgot. She lost consciousness while she's on the top. Good thing she was able to turn off the water and, and pull the plug so that the water receded. But she was in good shape. But the sudden spiking of the temperature gave her uh, probably a heat stroke or something. So it's something that you, you're supposed, someone is watching your, your, your heart rate and your temperature so that it doesn't spike that fast. It's a me medical procedure type thing. Yeah. Because uh, the problem is she's a young uh, girl. Okay. A girl. Young girl. Oh. And, uh, about uh, her mid twenties. Ah, yes. So the problem is, uh, she says that uh, one of her friend also has a psoriasis, and uh, they were treating her with uh, chemotherapy, with, uh, steroids. Yes. And the uh, thing is, uh, she's concerned about her the whole body because yes, it's uh, uh, all over uh -huh. her body. And I suggested to her uh, putting some because we. We have there. We have experimented with the neem tree. Yes. She was drinking neem tree, and it uh, really uh, yeah, yeah. helped her. And uh, but the thing is, she wants to have a fast. Uh, and, uh, uh, not well. The when they give steroids, they do have a fast result. But then, if they stop with the steroids, they come back. So it it it. Uh, Eloise says. Disease does not come without a cause, okay? The way uh, uh, the disease is invited and the way is prepared. So you don't get psoriasis, nah, nah, there's nah, no offending thing that happened. So it took probably years for a person to have a malfunctioning uh, imm uh, immune body, immune system, so it will take time to reverse. Although we've had results in three weeks to four weeks time, uh, we just teach the person what we taught you in more details. So you can get it. One patient we have was 82, 83, and we were so happy because she's been a psoriatic patient since she was 18. So imagine that. Uh, all the derma and all the medications she's been. So she comes to us, all these patches, and she was too old for us to do fever therapy. <laughs> so we just tell her, this is your diet, follow it, and so on and so forth. I put her on liquid diet for almost a month. In three days, four days time, the, the rashes started disappearing. And she gave us a testimony after several months. She said, now I have flawless skin. <laughs> now, that, that is smart. But there are others that took a, lo a longer time to, to clean up. Because autoimmune disease in medicine 
incurable. You can modulate. It can come back if you eat something that really is okay. So when the vegetarian diet is very powerful, raw food and vegetarian diet very powerful. Lupus, one doctor became famous in Europe, Dr. Max Gerson. He became famous in the US as a cancer specialist. When he put patients on a raw on a vegetarian diet, the lupus reaction started going down. And the dermatological society hated him and so sued him for practicing uh, uh, you know, uh, under a, a dermal case. So these patients rooted for him. And so they, they thought, the judge said, ask the dermatologist, can you cure lupus? He said, no, then let this guy do it. He's doing it. I do have a follow-up question regarding uh, psoriasis because I have a friend who does not eat any pork. She's yeah, a missionary. Yes. Well, I'm just sharing with you some of the other causes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm asking this question because I want to know what she's missing. Uh, she's been practicing vegetarian diet for quite a while. Uh -huh. and, uh, stress. 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 Oh. You know, if you're stressed out, your immune system is on red alert. Oh. Okay, so you're stressed out. Then you're not sleeping properly. Mm -hmm. So you're stressed out. You know? okay. And today, you're stressed out. Tomorrow, one day, two days, three days, four days, one week, one month. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the effect of that? Severe cases can hyperthermia be done using the uh, perfusion therapy, uh, like done for the heart patients, where they can control temperature very quickly. Uh, there are techniques. There, there's a special machine that they put in the anal area that increases the temperature to the patient, or they also have these special ceramic lamps that they apply directly. So there's a certain machine that does hyperthermia cost millions of uh, pesos. I'm talking, I'm talking about hyperthermia we use or hypo or hypo hyper hypo. Hyper uh -huh. in, in uh, heart surgery. Well, the hypothermia, hyperthermia is making the body temperature yes. high. high. Yes, the hypothermia is going down. Right, the other side. No? Yeah. Uh -huh. So that the body will slow down. Yes. So that then they can do their surgery and prevent. Right, but we, you can use the same machine to make hyperthermia. Ah, the same machine, the same, same machine. Uh, if we had that technology, that would be great. But see, we are we only have uh, less uh, expensive machines. The only thing about uh -huh. severe case because we we use that every day over our brain. Come from all all our heart patients go through this hyperthermia uh -huh. yes, yes. and we can adjust. The food temperature of uh -huh. higher level. Uh -huh. Whatever probably if we had a machine, we can do it. Yeah, probably. But in alternative medicine, like let's say someone comes, oh, we have this uh, supplement, it's so expensive, you buy it. That usually have a cheaper alternative. Same thing with someone comes with a machine, oh, you have this machine, you know, this is expensive, 100,000, so usually you have an alternative for that. See? Medicine, you have alternative for the drugs, but alternative, you also have alternative. So, millions of dollars worth of hyperthermic equipment. Ha! Siling na buyo lang yan. Do you get what I'm getting at? We should be creative and not be controlled too much by commercialism. How about Harley Games? Yes, probably. Kids does that, you know? A follow-up, uh, another question, though. Uh, we have a cousin who's, uh, we have a suspicion that he has uh, lung cancer because there's some inflammation uh, below his lung and uh, it they was... do an x-ray or do a test? Uh, I guess they, they did something, they did some test and uh, they want to, to get a biopsy but he refused. Okay, uh, biopsy. The doctor who developed biopsy was a doctor who was trying to cure cancer. So what he was doing is, this is the tumor, he would poke a needle directly there, and the immune system uh, is negatively charged. Cancers have been found to be positively charged. But the cancer has a thick protein coating that is also negatively charged, so our immune system could not recognize cancer easily. 
the immune system utilizes enzymes to resolve that positively uh, negatively charged protein so that it will unmask cancer cells. So this doctor, what he did is, he invented a needle that will go into the tumor and then he put an electrode so it will produce a negative, uh, a, a, pos a positively charged current so that the immune system will be attracted to the cancer and start eating it even though there's a thick protein coating. So he used that and also developed the biopsy. Medicine took just the biopsy and did not use the electrical field therapy. So one drawback of the biopsy is that a tumor may be made out of good cells, bad cells, intermediate cells. When you take a needle and poke it there, you're actually doing a blind shot, not knowing what you're gonna get. It's like a, somebody going to a barangay and the first person he meets is a child, and then he says, ah, this barangay is made up with children. So he's, he's just doing that. And so if you, you, you don't get the cancer cells, you'll say, ah, this is a benign thing. So it can give you a false negative result. The second one is, yeah, you got the bad cells. Oh, it's positive. When you pull the needle out, you have a wound there, bleeding and oozing. You actually bring some of the cells out and they can go to the bloodstream and go somewhere else. So you develop what we call CD, you spread it. So you found out, oh, it's cancerous, but you just spread it out. So that's the second one. The third one, of course, is, oh, I forgot. <laughs> okay, Doc, so, so he made the right decision not to go. Uh, yes, but you have to find out if it's cancer. Okay. So we, in the alternative medicine I think there is a urine test that can give you a warning one year before a buccal appears. Cancer cells, all cancer cells produce a chemical called beta HCG. Beta HCG is a CAT test that is done uh, for pregnant women. But there's a doctor who's able to make a test so sensitive that he can at least see if the person can have cancer later on or has some bad cells in the body. So there, it's just a simple urine test, but there's only one doctor doing it in the country now. So you give your urine to him, and you are, you have a, a cyst or a, a tumor or something that you are, you're not sure that it's cancerous. You then collect your first morning urine, at least about 200 cc, and you put it in the fridge, that in the freezer, and you cover, make sure there's a letter that says you urine. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you send it to him. If, if you're in Manila, you, you, you put some ice and, and bring it to him. Now, for those who are far away, like here, you check the internet, there is a preparation and you put acetone and alcohol and you turn it into powder and then you can send it by, oh. by mail. Americans are sending their urine to him in, in powder form. Oh. So check uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Manuel Navarro urine test. Manuel Navarro. Dr. Manuel Navarro was one of the top cancer specialists in his days. Uh, his, some of his patients are still alive today, 1950s. And he was treating people by natural means. And uh, that test, he was able to fine tune to about 98% accurate. It cost only 500 pesos. Oh, wow. So, okay. Why do you have to have someone to yeah. you and make a hole there and you spread it? when a simple, non-invasive test can be done. But medical doctors are not aware of it, about it, and doesn't like it, or, or doesn't believe in it. So it's only for us that are practicing alternative medicine. He, he changed his, uh, his lifestyle, though, because he was a smoker before and eats a lot of yes. pork, and uh, now it, uh, it's subsiding. It's subsiding. Yes. And uh, what is uh, another thing that we could uh, advise him so that... Uh, uh, there are about more than 50 cancer protocols mm -hmm. in the world. There's the Huxley uh, protocol, there's the Hallelujah Daddy pro pro protocol, there's the Dr. Max Gerson protocol, there's the Hulda Clark protocol. Check the internet, they're all there. Okay. They're all there. But there are things that should be done. Uh, where is he from? Uh, he's here, Haro. Uh, okay. See, it takes us so long to consult with, uh, with them. Uh, if he's he just check the internet, the, the, the information will be there. Okay, what, uh, what website now? I don't know. You just check cancer, alternative treatments for cancer, and they'll be there. So natural treatment for cancer? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, thank you so much. It's like you're asking me how to build the house. It, it takes so long. <laughs> yes. Uh, you talk about the uh, probe, electrical probe. Is that, uh, 
the cancer? Ah, yes, the what guy who developed his death. Oh, what can you say about uh, Hulda Clark? Uh, from... Okay, Hulda Clark is a microparasitologist. She's a doctor. And she studied uh, that, well, in, on autopsies. Most cancer patients has a liver flu, a special parasitis in the, the liver, of course. And she also noted that in the presence of isopropyl alcohol, this liver flu really becomes more active. And when it's present in a person, in a patient, his immune system becomes weak. And so he has linked, she has linked uh, cancer with the presence of liver flu and the presence of parasites in the system. Now, Mrs. White says cancer are caused by the germ. So yes, there are, there are such. And uh, especially for hepatitis, uh, well, hepatitis uh, virus causing liver uh, cancer and HPV, uh, a human papilloma virus causing cancer of the cervix. But if your immune system is strong and okay, then there should not be a problem. So uh, she theorized that there are certain frequency, electrical frequency, that can kill these parasites. And so there's a machine called a biozapper. And she put it in the website so you, you can make your own biozapper. And we've used it successfully for uh, dengue. You zap, 24 hours, dengue is gone. So you can use that machine and it kills bacteria, virus, and fungus, and parasites. Some missionaries in Germany would bring that to their mission field. And they zap all the natives they call it puking and having loose bowel movement, but it, it works. So she is doing that. And I believe there's some truth in what she says. But just because you don't have a biosaver doesn't mean you cannot get uh, healed or, or cured from cancer. Ah, oh, cancer. So as I said, you know who I was talking to the other day. As I said, cancer is a multifactorial uh, cause. It means you may be having uh, a weakened immune system because of other things. Yeah, parasite may be some of the cause. That's why meat eating and pork eating is something that is discouraged when you have cancer. Not only does it make your blood uh, acidic, but certain parasites could not be destroyed by cooking. And we are told in the spirit prophecy that as time passes, disease in nature, especially in the animal kingdom, is going to be so, so rampant that will be safer going back to the original diet. It will be more uh, practical for us to go back. Once we see all diseases, mad cows disease, so many diseases, but we're getting it. And we have to be aware about this. It's not gonna be about reform, or, or it's not only about it, it's gonna be about safety. And unless we, we are more open to that, we're gonna be in a losing side. We, we are not familiar. Uh, we're only using 4% of our brain. That means, 96% is unused. Huh? So in full of says everything is about parasite, she still has a 96% chance of being wrong. So to fight cancer, one doctor says it's about vitamin C lack of vitamin C, about lack of oxygen, about acidity of the blood, about parasites, about this, this, this. But if you have the funding and you have the cheaper ways, use air all the principle. It's like uh, 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 getting a lot of ticket, you know. <laughs> The more entry, the more chances of winning. No, don't do that. No. <laughs>
two days, three days, four days. He ended up in the hospital, they had to open him up, and there was this hard, hard charcoal in his intestines. <laughs> so a little, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. If she or he is going to do it uh, as a normal thing, uh, yeah, we are producing toxins every day, yeah, it can help. We are living in a very toxic environment. So probably he can take as much, as little as maybe one fourth teaspoon in a glass of water, but if he has some health ailments, Maybe you can go size a teaspoon in a glass of water. And maybe follow up with another glass just to be sure. So it can be taken daily? It can be taken daily. Anyway, he doesn't eat anything. When we are giving it as a medicinal thing, you can eat. Then we tell them, take it two hours after meals. So that at least you have absorbed quite a lot. The cremesine, which is being used by a nephrologist, charcoal, he dumps it on the food. The doctor say, dump it on the food, and then you take it. Of course, you don't absorb too much of it. Uh, recently, uh, that from Taiwan, they have this what a bamboo charcoal that uh, well they had a peanut covered with bamboo charcoal, <laughs> so they're eating it. Well, it's detoxifying them. They're eating it. It, it does detoxify. Them. What about if they're using a capsulized charcoal? Maybe one to two capsule with a glass of water. Just yes, you know. let's not overdo things. that are rich or high in vitamin B12, which are lots of uh, Well, for, for vegan, uh, we have been, uh, there the non-vegan, the people are so uh, scaring us too much about, uh, oh, you lack vitamin B12 because you're a vegan. No? A vegan is someone who doesn't drink uh, milk or eat eggs, and it's just pure vegetarian. Uh, I make my patients vegan if they have cancer, you know, really, really strictly. So eggs, uh, milk, does have B12. Animal Kingdom usually will have B12. Our body produces B12 through the intestinal tract, our good bacteria. So if you don't want to drink milk because you're a vegan, you can make your own probiotic. Although you can buy probiotic quite easily at the health food store. You can take cabbage, yeah, chop it, wash it well, and put it in mineral water. Let it stay for three days. And then when you smell yucky and it tastes sour, that's already your probiotic. So you can get the fluid and put it in the fridge and maybe take a teaspoon every day. Or you can get soy milk and add a little bit of that, you can make your own yogurt. Yeah, something like that. So, but I'd rather just buy a tablet of oh, And if you're not thinking, you can drink yogurt or yogurt, you know? If we eat one egg, it's equivalent to smoking five cigarettes. I haven't heard that. But one egg, one egg has 56 milligrams of protein. And according to some research, we only need 10 to 20 milligrams of protein. Now the WHO, United Nations, they have a higher level. Also the US, 50, 54, 56. If you eat too much protein, there are so many things that can happen. And if you are eating too much protein, let's say your body is producing 100 cells every day. If you eat too much protein, it's going to be forced to produce 200, 300, 400 cells per day. So you have more error of replication. You have more chances of producing cancer cells. Number three, uh, when you are putting too much protein into the system, the rest is thrown as uric acid. Uric acid is not good. So uh, the food pyramid, of the alternative medicine program is more on complex carbohydrates, less protein, and minimal fat. So that is how it's, it's usually done. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Goiter or non toxic, if it's your hypothyroid or hyperthyroid, do the blood test T3, T4, TSH. If it's high, then it's hyperthyroid. But whether it's hyper or hyper, we still give the same treatment. We give kelp, which is seaweeds. You can get it from Chinese herbal store. Of course, you can also have seaweeds every day, you know. 
then we give ginseng, uh, which is a hormonal balance. So if it's hyper, then you, you will give it lower dose. If it's hypo, you then you give it higher dose. Then we apply actively charcoal poultice. Sometimes we give enzymes if it's too big so that it will shrink. And then we change the diet. Mm. Ah, okay. Uh, if, if the T3, T4, and TSH, TSH is normal, all three are normal. Okay, so even if this is not hyperthyroid, I would think it's a hypothyroid. Okay, so what I do is I will give kelp or seaweeds you can get from Chinese service store. Meron naman dito. And you have no healthy options here? No. Uh, a Chinese store. You go to the Chinese service store. Kelp is CBC is in capsule or tablet form. We can take it two capsules or three capsules, three times a day before meals. And ginseng. Or you can get 4G at Medicaid Drug. No? Ginseng, ginger, ginkgo, garlic. Huh? So we take that maybe one capsule three times a day. Or you can even do two capsules three times a day. If you get hyper at night, maybe just one capsule at night. And that will that will help uh, help with. Then you can probably take uh, carica. Maybe carica will have some papaya extract or papaya enzyme that you can take to help shrink uh, carica and essence. If there's healthy options, you should get pancreatic enzymes from healthy options, but that's in Manila. Or maybe Bacolod. I think they have healthy options in Bacolod. Uh, the doctor prescribed him uh, about calcium. He has a brittle bone. So, what will you Why did she get brittle bone? I, uh, I asked him if he did soft drinks. Soft drinks, indeed. Well, one of the causes of osteoporosis is uh, sometimes they don't exercise anymore. Uh, they don't want to be out in the sun because they're afraid of getting dark you know? <laughs> or too much acidity in their the diet. So. What uh, we can do is strengthen her their bones well. No? Now, where do cows get their calcium? Grass. Grass. So I don't, I'm not saying he eats grass. No? I'm saying a healthier diet will already give him calcium. People don't lack calcium because they don't have a source. A lot of food we eat is as calcium. It's because of some other condition. Either they're not utilizing it, absorbing it. In which case, what I would give if they really want to speed up the bone development is calcium with magnesium and vitamin D3. Yeah. So if he's having problems absorbing, at least the vitamin D3 is already there. But uh, uh, the doctor said that uh, her, his age is uh, Ah, so they test that um, uh, according to age, your bone should be so and so. Huh? Yeah, he's 30, but the doctor said your bones is almost 80 years old. Uh, 80 years old. Well, exercise in a good program. Find out if he's sleeping uh, enough. If he's exercise, if his stress level is high, what his diet uh, is. Because he, you take calcium, that's not enough. Huh? Is that all you need to have stronger bones? No. 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 So they, they, it's, it's a find out what is possible. But a good diet and exercise and sunlight.